Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where we discuss all things money, marketing, and metaphysics. My name is Kristen Noel, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about something called a financial thermostat. Now, someone in my group actually asked me, what is a financial thermostat? Now, this is something that I actually wrote in my book as well, so make sure you order my book in the comments below. But a financial thermostat, well, let's kind of backtrack a little bit first. I want to share with you a staggering statistic that I feel like is mind-blowing enough for you to know about so that we can understand what a financial thermostat even is. So I was looking online, but basically 70% of lottery winners, the people that have won the lotto, have actually lost everything and have declared bankruptcy two years after they have won the lottery. So that's crazy, right? That means that 70% of people that have won the lotto lost everything within two years. Now, at the same time, I also read somewhere that President Trump, for example, he was in a lot of debt in one time. And there was a story of how he walked by a homeless guy and said to the person that he was walking with that he was poorer than the guy that was sitting on the street because he was in millions and billions in debt. But years later, he was able to bounce back. Right, and so the number one thing I wanna talk about today is that the number that is in your bank account at this moment is something called a financial thermostat, and this is actually what you're comfortable with. Now, in order for you to develop or to make more money or to attract more money, it's more focusing on your wealth consciousness instead of doing more or producing more or making more. So granted, action, is involved, you do need to take action in order for you to see the results that you want in your life. However, before you even dive into the action part, it's so important for you to understand where your wealth consciousness is at this current moment and whether or not you have to adjust your financial thermostat in order for you to not only attract the amount of money that you want, but to keep that coming every month, right? To have consistent income and to raise that consistent income. So let's talk first about what financial thermostat even is, right? So think of a financial thermostat like the thermostat in your home. So if you don't know how a thermostat works, basically it's set at a specific temperature, right? So let's just say it's set at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So let's just say that your thermostat is set at this amount and you open all of the windows in your home and it's raining outside and so it gets really, really cold, right? So what ends up happening is that your thermostat is going to turn on and it's gonna kick in and raise the temperature so that the temperature in the room maintains that degree, right? That level. So that way, you know, it, it doesn't get colder than it has to be or hotter than it has to be. Same thing, like let's just say that the room gets too hot, your thermostat will adjust accordingly so that the temperature remains the same way. Now, what's interesting is that you can apply the same idea to your finances, right? And how we know this is, I want you to actually pause this video if you can, or open up a new tab and look into your bank account at the moment, right? So the number that is in your bank account right now is actually your financial thermostat. This is the number that you're comfortable seeing in your bank account. And normally what ends up happening is that, let's just say hypothetically that you got a tax return or you somehow was able to receive more money, right? So what ends up happening is that if you're not conscious of it, subconsciously you're not comfortable with the amount of money that just came into your bank account overnight or suddenly, and you'll start behaving in a way that will lower that amount back to what you're comfortable with. Same goes if let's say that you lost your job and something happens and that money goes down, you start to probably get really uncomfortable and you'll start finding a job or you'll start doing something so that you maintain that level in your bank account and that you feel comfortable with. Now, that goes with everything in life. I just really wanna give you these examples so that you can see it in real life. This goes with the cleanliness in your home, right? For example, I'm comfortable with a certain level of cleanliness in my home. If it gets way too messy, if it gets too messy, then I can't help but to clean my home, right? Same goes with if it's too clean, right? 
subconsciously I'm going to be doing something to make it a little bit messy with what I'm comfortable with. So your job is to really figure out where your level of comfort is within your financial thermostat. And you start by doing that. So I'm going to walk you how you can actually change your financial thermostat. So the first thing that you can do is to actually go into your bank account and figure out what that number is. What is the number that is always hovering that no matter what you do, you're always around that number, right? The second thing you're going to do is that after you find out the number you are comfortable with, and you want to raise your financial thermostat, what I like to do is actually change the beliefs that I have about money. So we all have these different money beliefs that keep us from getting or attracting or even making the amount of money that we desire, right? And most of the time, the reason why we can't get to that next level is because we have beliefs that are stopping us from getting to that next level, right? Those beliefs that you have are not really yours. They're yours in the sense that you have believed them for a long time, but I want you to question those beliefs that you have because most of the time those beliefs were brought down to us by our parents, right? My money beliefs were brought from my parents, right? Growing up, seeing my parents react around money or my dad react around money gave me the belief that I have about money. So I want you to actually question what beliefs you have and, and change them. And in my program, I actually teach my clients and my students how to change your beliefs about money. So if you want to be a part of the program, make sure you put yourself on the wait list below because this is a very extensive accelerator that will take you from not knowing how to change your beliefs when it comes to money to mastering your money mindset so that you can actually start attracting more money. And it's not necessarily always doing more things, but it's becoming a different person and adopting new beliefs. Okay. So Basically, I said is to first of all, become aware of the number that is in your bank account because that basically defines the number that you're comfortable with in your financial thermostat. The second one is to actually change your money beliefs. The third tip that I have for you is to practice visualization and meditation because when you constantly visualize something in your mind, your subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between something that is real or not real. And so when you consistently practice visualization, the thing that it is that you want will eventually come into your life, right? Whether it's positive or negative. So obviously think positive thoughts about what it is that you want to attract, the amount of money that you want to bring into your life. But again, I go deeper into that in my program. So if you have any questions on that, leave a comment below, but I'm actually curious what you think your financial thermostat is and if this video was helpful for you because again unless you are aware of your wealth consciousness and your financial thermostat it's going to be hard for you to cross that bridge or reach that next level there's a really good book called the big leap by gay hendrix so that book talks a lot about upper limiting yourself again it's very similar to what i was talking about with the financial thermostat but ideally what it is, is that you want to change your financial thermostat so everything else falls into place, right? When you can change the temperature in your house and set it to a new temperature, then it kind of balances out again. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. If you want more videos like this, then make sure you check out these two videos over here. And obviously if you like this video, make sure you subscribe, like the video so that more people can see it. And I'll see you next time.